a very warm welcome to you, a heart warming welcome to another episode of Afternoon Express with me, Palisa Tembe. Now, if blood is thicker than water, then this evening's guest may as well be our family, judging by how often we see them on our TV screens at home. I'm talking about none other than renowned young TV actors Dylan and Michaela. Now they'll be continuing our week of famous faces feasting on their favorite foods, as well as preparing Dylan's beloved roti uh, Gatsby, that sounds absolutely delicious, as well as Michaela's favorite decadent brownie. Now, there'll even be more on this menu this evening, but before we don our aprons, let's meet these fabulous stars. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you Thank so much you. for having Thanks us. For I think that this is kind of overdue. I've had <laughs> so many stars from the show that you're um, a, a part of, or rather I should say, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that you are kind of gracing our screens. But it's my first time touching base with you guys, and this is what it's all about. Now, before we get into your current projects, I want to find out just about the history and where you guys find yourselves today. I mean, you, Dylan, <laughs> have been probably performing and auditioning since the age of 16. Around about 16, yeah. Yeah, tell us a little bit about your journey. Um, oh, it's a long story, but it sort, <laughs> of, it sort of happened by accident or by chance. Um, so in grade three, myself and my best friend at Erika Primary School, we were like, okay, let's join dance, which our school offered. Uh, we decided to join, but at the end of the year of grade three, he had to go back home, which was out of country. Mm. Grade four started, I completely forgot about this. And then the dance teacher calls me up to go to the class. I'm like, oh, snap. Dance. I enter the room and there's 26 girls with tutus and, and <laughs> leotards wow. and tights. I'm like, miss, this is the wrong class. And then she said, no, Dylan, this is the right class for you. Um, and then from that point on, I tried to dodge her at every point, but she kept fetching me to come to every class. And then I stuck and I was like, listen, let me just enjoy it because there's no way of getting out of it. Um, and yeah, and then that's when my performance my love for passion and passion for performing started at, yeah. yeah, I think I was about eight years old. Wow, wow. my days. That's yeah. very young. Does that make you feel old? <laughs> it does. My <laughs> goodness. I mean, Michaela, I was about to say, you can't Girl. really comment as much because I mean, you're right there. You know. Yeah. Tell us about your journey. I mean, acting. T I mean, I literally could say that she's a TV presenter on her own really? right. Okay. You literally have this presence about you. Thank when you, you step into a room, we all have to pay attention. <laughs> Tell us about your uprising in, in performance. Thank you so much. Well, mine's not very different from Dylan's, actually. Mine started at a very young age. My cousin and I actually used to put on these performances for our families. We used to watch this musical theatre production called Cat and the Kings, directed mm -hmm. by David Crum and Talia Peterson. And we used to reenact these really funny moments for our families and we just wanted to put a, a smile on their faces mm. and so that's when my passion for acting really started and I started dancing also at a very young age I was about 10 years old and I started dancing competitively in fact and um, you know I was in high school and I realized that I needed to make a choice what would I do mm. and so I thought I would do the two things that I excelled at most which was dancing and acting and I just went full force into the industry you know started off doing uh, dance productions musical theaters then TV commercials eventually started to do some small roles and then greater roles came along and that's when I met, met Dylan for the first time yeah. on the set of dance of in dance. 2017, 2017 I think it was that was quite Mama a while ago yeah. oh Wow, yeah. so your history dates we go way, way back. back. Yeah. We go back, back to time. So yeah, that was no. our first major sort of role that we both booked, and I think our careers just really started flourishing from there. Yeah, um, I mean, South Africa, it is no... It's no uh, question mark that I literally stalk every single guest oh that I have goodness. on my show. I stalk these two. Girl, they were, you know, oh. part what, what? locking and dropping. <laughs> I love it. No, but so much so that you have actually sustained a knee injury. I did on what that very happened? set. Um, I don't know. We were. You see, the thing is, we were doing Latin ballroom dancing, which is a genre that's completely out of my comfort zone. And because we were on heels twenty four seven, having to do immense training, I sort of just my knee, I don't know, uh, it's called patella tendonitis, and yeah. <laughs> and then I just stopped dancing, stopped dancing, but I never stop, you know, once a dancer, always a dancer yeah. girl, so yeah. I love that, and speaking of, so Latin, Latin American ballroom, you're not quite familiar with, but what dancing genres are you both kind of, do, does one say fluent in? 
Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, one, one could say fluent in, like, I call it my language. Mm. Uh, and the genre that's my language is contemporary. Even though I started with ballet, and because I was the only boy in the class of 26 girls, um, I attended a lot of workshops that my teacher took me to. Mm. Uh, my late teacher, Miss Manuel, she took me to a whole lot of workshops where I learned hip hop, Latin, jazz, cabaret. And then from that point on, I branched out up until high school where we centralized on contemporary with my dance teacher at my high school, Bella High School. Mm. And that's where it was just, okay, now this is my tongue. <laughs> Birthed yeah. a king. I, it does. <laughs> I think for me, um, I started off doing modern dancing at a very young age. Girl, same We same. have so much <laughs> in common. What is Everything happening? that uh, Michaela's saying, I'm kind of like, me too. Literally, and I just oh, fell in love with it. And then later on, I started doing hip-hop dancing and I got my Western province and my South African colours in hip-hop dancing as well. And in 2008, mm. my crew actually competed in Russia and we came first in 2008, which was an amazing wow. experience, so humbling. So, yeah, I have extensive training in dancing and um, I don't think I'll ever stop. It doesn't matter how old I get, I don't think I'll ever stop. Can I ask a controversial question? You may. What's your first love, dancing or acting? Ooh, girl! For both of you. Girl! I'm, I'm gonna say dancing just because dance is what introduced me to performance. Yeah. Yeah. I have to agree with Dylan, that's exactly it. Dancing was the doorway for me into the performance field, mm. so for sure. But I love acting. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like dancing and then acting is like, it's, it's, yeah, right there, right like, there, girl, yeah, right there. Like, right there. Mm, Speaking yeah. about acting, you both collaborated on an independent comedy film. Yes. Take a seat? Yes, take a seat. Tell us about it. So Take a Seat is basically an independent short film, as you know. It's, it's not quite a comedy and it's oh. not quite a drama. It's mm. somewhere in between and we like to call it a dramedy. A dramedy. <laughs> <laughs> because it touches on both, right? And um, it was a really fun experience. It is uh, written and directed by Steven Reda, produced by uh, Swedish filmmaker Andre Havius, and the cinematographer was Robin Taylor. Mm -hmm. And so it goes about a girl who plays the role of, well, Michaela. Her name is Michaela, ironically. and. Um, she is in this observation room in the vaccination station and she's forced to take a seat. And ironically enough, her ex-boyfriend, Brandon, Brandon, played by Dylan over here, happens to take a seat right next to her. The drama, the drama. of it all. Can you imagine? <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. Oh, yeah. What happened? Okay, no, no. You know, <laughs> we don't want to ruin we it. We would love to tell you, but basically yeah. they are forced to sort of face each other and resolve some unresolved past issues because uh, it ended on some shaky terms. Yeah. And um, yeah, we're really excited about this one. It was, no, it was fun. <laughs> Dylan, it seems as if your career keeps bringing you back to Michaela. Yeah. What is it about this hand? I mean, speak to me about the chemistry that you guys have just evolved throughout the years. Yeah, I think we've been friends like like since 2017. I yeah. think. Yeah. Five from, years. Yeah. From, mm. Oh my days. Five years. Five bro. years. Mm. <laughs> so on that on that set specifically, she was sort of because I was 17. Mm. at the time. So she was sort of like this mother figure for me. <laughs> because, because I'm a lot older, yeah. I know I don't look it, but I'm a lot older. Yeah. And then I, I sort am. of like <laughs> leaned into that and then that's how we got closer. Stepping on to next jobs and next jobs and next jobs. And even now with, with Blood and Water, yes. the current relationship that both yeah. of our characters find themselves in, yeah. it's just like, oh snap, maybe there is this chemistry that we just have which is why it just keeps Maybe. coming back to me. Yeah. Oh, I love to see it. Well, South Africa, <laughs> do not move a muscle because we have got these two throughout the entire show. But now, not only are we testing their dancing, not only we're we testing their acting, <laughs> but we're also testing their cooking. So, Tumi, what recipe do we have lined up next? 